Are you looking to stand out in a job interview? If so, this is the video for you. We're going to talk about five different things that you can do to stand out in your interview. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ben Preston, author of Harness Your Butterflies and creator of the Career Accelerator Program. If you are new to the channel, if you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button below. And if this video is helpful for you, leave a thumbs up so other people can find it too. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. If you are going into interviews, it might be really easy to feel super nervous, feel anxiety, and just kind of be wondering how can I position myself over the top of let's say 100 other candidates. Well, in this video, I'm actually gonna walk you through step-by-step step, the different things that you can do. And I'm gonna be going back and forth between this, the camera here and the monitor that I have. So uh, I can actually show you what we're talking about. But the key thing when it comes to standing out in an interview is to make sure that you understand where you will fit into the organization and what the organization is looking for. It doesn't matter if you're the most impressive candidate that they interview, if you do not know how to speak the language, if you do not know how to communicate with them, in a way that expresses your skill set, expresses how awesome you are, it's gonna be really difficult to stand out in the interview. So in this video, I'm actually gonna show you how you can articulate, how you can figure out what are the things that they're looking for, and how do you position that when you actually go to interview. So let's jump into it. Now, the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go through the job description and highlight what are the key points. You wanna make sure you do this, obviously, before your interview, um, and this will tie into when you're researching on the website, you can apply the same thing here. So on my monitor, I actually have a job that I pulled up, I just went into um, to Google Jobs, I typed in remote jobs, and this was the first one that popped up. We'll do, we can do more than one, but I just wanna go through this example. So what this looks like, and typically jobs are structured the same way, usually. So on one side, you have your qualifications or your skill sets, what are the things that you actually technically need to be able to do? And then on the other side, they give you more of your responsibilities, your role, what are the things that you're, they're kind of painting the picture of what you're actually gonna be able to do. So. The things that I would go through if I was going through and highlighting this job description, if I was preparing for this interview, I would look at, okay, strong written and communication skills. So they're looking for someone who knows how to articulate their what they're saying. Um, they're looking for channels of communication. They wanna make sure that you know what are the channels of communication. So that's social media, press, ads, all that sort of stuff. So terms like channels of communication is important when you're actually in the interview. You wanna make sure you use communication channels, channels of communication in some of your responses. Some other things that you would wanna note um, I look through here, they sell self starter, the ability to work independently, all jobs say that. But you wanna look for the things that are. Um, over the top that you might not see in every other job description. So embraces critical questioning for me is a really big one. That indicates that when they ask you at the end of the interview, do you have any questions for us, that you probably should have some questions ready. Things like service and continuous improvement. And if I had to guess, based on that, they're probably looking for someone who has an interest or an understanding of new media, things like TikTok, video marketing, that sort of thing. Because if I had to guess based on this job description, uh, and looking at some of the bullet points that they have here, it's probably an older team, people of individuals who have either been at the organization a long time or who don't have a lot of experience in innovation or media. So based on this, we talked about kind of the theory of what they're looking for in an interview E. So if you come in, you have all this information prepared, you know what you're gonna be talking about, super helpful. Not to beat this to death, but you wanna go through, take out what are the key highlights, and just as we did, we unpacked, okay, they're probably looking for this based on this vocabulary, they're probably looking for this based on the words that they're using, and then practice those response or anticipate the questions that they're gonna ask. If you can go into your interview and say, I have experience creating and implementing plans, I understand channels, I understand innovation media, I understand how to position people as a thought leader, and you have examples to back that up, you're gonna stand out, no problem. The second tip goes in with what we just talked about, which the second tip is knowing your differentiators. If you are able to find out what they're looking for, you've done the research, you've done tip one, number two is figuring out where you fit in to that overall plan. So we just talked about what they're looking for and to be able to position yourself and know your differentiators. Some examples of what your differentiation might be is actual experience in the industry if you can point to I've actually executed work in this industry, that's gonna be huge. Another example is taking something directly from the job description and applying it in a way that you can use it. So in the job description, um, they say uh, impactful results, delivered impactful results. If you're able to point to data and say, I have this ability to move the needle from one thing to another, you, are, you can take the data and actually put in 
uh, as an example or bring it with you and say, I noticed that you guys were looking for somebody who was able to deliver results. Here's an example of when I did that. So make sure that you know your differentiators. You don't have to, when you go into interviews like this, you don't have to uh, look at it and say, I need to beat out every other person in the room. What you really wanna focus on is addressing what they're needing, what they're talking about, what's in the job description, and having that dialogue back and forth. But the biggest thing that you wanna do is when you know your differentiators, you can double down on them and make sure that you actually come prepared to talk about the things that make you successful. The third thing that you wanna do is you wanna position your answers through the lens of your strengths. Now, if you don't know what your strengths are already, if you're kind of early on in your career, I recommend spending some time and figuring out what those are. We're not talking about, I'm good at social media or I'm good at running. We're talking about what are these soft skills or what are these skills and strategies that you are able to use that make you successful. The biggest resource that I recommend for this, if you're still trying to figure out what your strengths are, are things like Clifton Strength Finders. You can take the test, it doesn't really cost that much, but it gives you your strengths and the things that you can talk to. So for example, for me, one of my biggest strengths is strategy. I would come into this and say, you know, I have these strategy strengths, and then you're able to talk through the job description or your answers through the lens of what your what your strengths are. So for example, in this specific exam or this specific job that we're talking about, they have in here um, driven results, driven measured, measured outcomes. Um, they have um, client communications. Another one of my strengths is winning others over, which has a lot to do with talking with people, getting to know people. So I would make sure to bring that up. Um, and what that would look like in your interview is you would have this conversation. They'd say, tell me, you know, what is something that you're really good at? And you can say, I have a really great strength at interacting with people. I know how to communicate clearly and make sure that I understand what clients are looking for. And I, you know, I've done that here, here, and here. Here's some examples. Let me talk through it. So that's one example of positioning one of my answers as a strength. The other example is if we're talking about, you know, if they say, give me a time when you've, you know, set up and executed a project. And then I, I would say something like, I'm really good at strategy. I really love getting the details about what are we doing strategic? How are we positioning ourselves differently? And as somebody that's really good at strategy, what I love doing is setting up plans, making sure that we know what our benchmarks are, making sure that we're able to actually build out what are the budgets and planning and blah, 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 blah. But that would be an example of how you would position your answer as a strength. And the first step to doing that is making sure that you understand what your strengths are and that you're able to position whatever they're looking for, the differentiators and the research that we talked about before, making sure that you're able to position those as a strength. So that's number three. Number four is have a plan for the job. If you're reading through and you don't know exactly what they're gonna ask you, you don't exactly know what every single part of the job is going to entail, but you can infer some things based on the job description. So for this, this specific example, uh, we were talking about how they might be looking for someone with innovation, or new media skills. So if you are coming in and you're looking at, here's what they want me to do, here are the skill sets that I need to have, you wanna make sure that you can give them a 30, 60, 90 day job outlook. They might interview you and say, what would you do in this situation? You can say, I've really thought about that. And you know, I think if I started tomorrow, here's what I would do in 30 days. I think we would reevaluate what is our current data, what current platforms do we have, what engagement do we have, what target audiences do we have, and I would create a plan and be able to build that out. But if you can outline and speak in terms, which I'll get to the next tip in a second, but if you can talk to um, what would I actually be doing in the job, it kind of gives them an indicator that you are ready to go. And a lot of times when interviewing somebody, and I've been on the other side of interviews a lot, if people can articulate to me that they are ready to go and they understand the job and there's gonna be very minimal training required for this position, it's gonna be a really good sign for you and you're gonna be able to stand out in those interviews in a really, really big way. And the fifth tip, which I kind of alluded to, is use your language strategically. You wanna make sure that you position yourself as already having the job. That means when you're talking through an answer, you don't wanna talk in hypotheticals. You wanna make sure that you're talking as if you already have the job. If they ask you a question about how would you do this, you wouldn't say, well, I think that this is what should happen. You would say, I would do this. You wouldn't necessarily have to go out of your way to make sure that you answer every single time and say, I already have the job, this is exactly what I would do. But you wanna make sure that when you answer, you're actually answering in a way that's concrete and explains to them that you already think that you have the job. An example of a passive phrase would be like, this position should, or this position would, or this person would. And they might use that terminology, but you would say, 
I would do this, this is how I would handle this, and you would talk more first person, more active, um, and making sure that you're using terms that imply that you already have the job without coming off aggressively or things like that. So those are the five things that I have, but what else are you wondering about? Leave a comment below. What other interview questions do you have? What things would you like me to talk about more on this channel? I'd love to hear from you. And until then, I'll see you on the next one.